One thing that you'll want your programs to do quite often is to behave differently under different circumstances or to check out and confirm that the state of things is the way that you need it to be. And for that, we'll use conditional statements like if statements. So up until now, the programs that we've looked at were ones where each line of code got executed no matter what the input was, no matter what the different variables were equal to, or things like that. The program just did one line, the next line, and so on. Um, but we have seen one control structure, one structure in our code that can make it so that certain lines run lots of times, and that's a for loop. And the for loop does check a condition like, have we run out of numbers in our range? Well, an if statement is another control structure. It's another structure in the language that allows us to run a set of statements only when a certain condition is true. If that condition is false, then we skip those lines is another way to think of it. So here's an example of an if statement. This if statement is inside a function, but if statements can be outside of a function, they can be inside of a for loop, they can be lots of different places in your code, and I'd advise you to sort of try around with it and see where all it makes sense for an if statement to work or for an if statement to be put. So we can use an if statement to make it so that a set of statements is run only when a certain condition is true. So for instance, this print here will only happen if the number that that variable references, num, whatever num references, if that is greater than 1000, then we will print out it is too large to fit. So if we were trying to fit items into a room or a mailbox or something, then we could use this kind of statement. So if someone asks to run this function and they feed it the number 2000, then 2000 will, it will see that 2000 is greater than 1000. This is sort of a logical statement that can be true or false. Either num is greater than 1000, true, or num is not greater than 1000, in which case this statement is false. We're not stating this absolutely is true. We're saying if it's true, then do this line underneath, do the print. So if the num passed in was 2000, then our if statement would see that 2000 is greater than 1000, and it would print out it is too large to fit. If num was 5, it would see that 5 is not greater than 1000, and it would just skip the line that the print statement is, and it would execute any statements that are below it, but not inside of the body of the if statement. Similar to our function definitions, the body of the if statement is whatever is just below the if statement and indented. If we stop indenting, that code is not part of the if statement. So if I had a print done down below here that was not indented under the if statement, then that would always happen but things that belong inside the body of the if statement will only happen when the condition of the if statement is true. There are other structures that we can tack on to our if statements. There's the else portion. That is what happens when the condition that was stated is false. So here, if we step back through here, if the num given was 2000, 2000 is greater than 1000. So the if statement will see that and it will print, it is too large to fit. It will not 
do the rest of the statement at that point. It will then skip past the else portion. It will only do one of the two of these. It's an either or situation. It's not going to do both. And that hopefully makes some sense because num cannot be greater than 1,000 and not greater than 1,000. So the else part will only happen when num is not greater than 1,000. For instance, if num was 5, the if statement would see 5 is not greater than 1,000, so it would skip the print here. The else would be the part that gets done because else is done when num is not greater than 1,000 in this case. So it will print, it will fit. And hopefully this example makes logical sense to you. Something cannot be too large to fit and fit as well. There is one other piece of the structure that we can include when it makes sense to do so. And that is the L if, which is short for else if. So this is like when you give someone instructions. If you have $20, then please buy me ice cream. But if you have at least $5, buy me some chips instead. Otherwise, don't buy me anything, I'm fine. And so that's the same sort of thing that's happening here. If num is greater than 1,000, then we will print that it is too large. But if num is less than 5,000, then we'll print that it's too small. So for instance, say we needed to take up at least some of the space. Let's say we were filling a truck and things that are 1,000 square feet are too big for the truck. But if we don't have at least 500 square feet worth of stuff, it's not even worth running the truck. So we'll wait. And therefore, if something is between 1,000 and 500, then we say it will fit. So if the number five was given here, the if statement would see that five is not greater than 1,000, so it would skip that print that says it's too large. It would come down to the L if and say five is less than 500, and therefore it would print it is too small, and then it would be done with this whole chunk. It won't do the else, and as we saw, it wouldn't do the if. It will, don't, it will only do one of these out of the three in this case. And we can tag on as many L ifs as we want to. The thing to be aware of is that as you come further and further down, what you're saying is the things I have seen before were all false. So for instance, if I hit the L if statement, I know already that my number was not greater than 1000. Because if it was greater than 1,000, we would have done the if portion and stopped. We would never have gotten down to these other ones. So I know number is greater or is not greater than 1,000. And then I'm testing to see if num is less than 500. And by the time I hit the else, I know that both of these were false. That num was not greater than 1,000 and num was not less than 500. Otherwise, I would not have made it all the way down to the else. So these sort of compound or gather up facts that we know, conditions that we know to be true or false as we step down the sequence of them there. And so if I had other L ifs, I would be proving that other conditions are true or false and kind of adding those to my knowledge as I go down. Early programmers often forget that it's already been proven that the previous stuff was false when they get down to an L if or an else. And it's worth noting that the things inside of the body of the if statements, the L if and the else's don't have to be print statements. They could be math that gets done here, they could accept user input. They could do any other stuff that we might do in a block of code. Um, we just use prints here to make it a simple example. Um, 
and it could even be multiple lines in there. We could print that it is too large and ask them to try another number or something like that as well. As long as the chunk of code is indented, then it's going to be the body of the if statement or the elif or the else until we stop indenting and either do an elif or an else or don't do any of them and then we're outside of the if else statement altogether. This whole thing is often referred to as an if else statement because it's a combination of ifs, elses, and else ifs. To use if statements effectively, you're going to want to become familiar with conditional statements, or otherwise referred to as just conditionals. A conditional is any expression in your code that evaluates to true or false. Here are some examples of them, and the ones that are shown here are all comparisons. Something is greater than something else. Something is less than something else. Something is greater than or equal to something else. So these are like a lot of the conditional statements that you might make in a mathematical setting, except the thing to keep in mind is that typically in math, when we've made these kind of statements, we're making them as a statement of knowledge. N is greater than six. I already know this to be true and I'm using it as a part of my proof, for example. In code, we're most often using them to check whether that statement is currently true or false, and it may change. If I say n greater than 6, and then I subtract some from n, and n changes, n may no longer be greater than 6, so it may have been true at one point and become false at another point. So these are tests. They are not rules. They are not statements of known fact. They will evaluate to true or false. These are called, by the way, Boolean values, and we'll talk a little more about those later. So um, we have less than or equal to. We can check equality, and it's important to notice that for testing equality, we use two equal signs. This tells Python clearly, I'm not saying change name to store the value Kim, I am saying, please check whether name is currently Kim. And similarly, there is a not equal statement. There are many other kinds of conditional statements that you can use, and you'll get plenty of experience trying those out. I want to point out one thing that's commonly missed by early programmers, and that is that greater than is not the opposite of less than. If I say n greater than 6 and that comes back as false, n could be less than or equal to 6. So it's very important that you make sure that when you're considering conditionals, you've considered all of the possibilities. People often miss the equal to piece when they're trying to think of what's the opposite of what I wrote down. So if you say if n greater than 6 and then your else relies on n being less than 6, that's not going to handle all possibilities. It doesn't handle the case where n is equal to 6. So make sure that you remember that the opposite of greater than is less than or equal to. It handles all of the cases that your thing is less than or that is equal to. So if you need to do something special when the values are equal, make sure that you use an else if in that position. You might do n greater than 6 and handle that case. Else if n is equal to 6, handle that case. Else you now know that n is less than 6 because it was not greater than and it is not equal to. It must be less than. So bear in mind that less than and greater than 
are not pure opposites. You will miss the equality case if you don't consider it explicitly. When you're doing conditionals, you can make them much more complex if you would like to. For example, here, I've said, what if n plus 3 is greater than m? So it does the math of finding out what n is, what n plus 3 would be equal to, and then it checks, is that value greater than whatever m references? So you can do all sorts of math on either side of a, a comparison operator like greater than or like equals. So here we've said n mod 25, modulo is getting the remainder, right? So if I take n and I divide it by 25, what is the remainder? Is that remainder equal to zero? And you will get true or false for this, depending on the situation. For instance, if n is 50, then 50 mod 25 is in fact zero. So this would come back as true. But if you had 51, 51 mod 25 is one and therefore is not equal to zero. So this conditional would result in false. And if you used it in an if, that portion would not get executed. If you've ever done logic sort of stuff before, then you know that negating things, the not sort of concept, is pretty important. And in Python and in most slash all programming languages, you can use a not as well. Um, in Python, in fact, you use explicitly the word not. So here I've said, if not, n equals 15. What that would do is, if n equals 15 is true, then not would flip it, and your result from the whole statement would be false. If n equals 15 is false, then not would flip it, and the result from your whole statement would be true. This, in this example, is exactly the same as saying if n is not equal to 15. These two are equivalent statements. They would come out with the same result every time. But there are many cases in which using a not like this explicitly can be very helpful to forming your logic. You can also use combination statements between different conditionals, and and or, which you may have again seen in logical settings before. But in Python, it reads a little more like a sentence than it might have in any sort of logical syntax you might have seen in other settings. So here I'm saying if x is greater than 4 and y is less than 7, then we'll do whatever the body of the if statement is. That means that both of these must be true. If one of them was not true and the other one was, the whole statement would still not be true. If I have $5 and the store is open, I'll buy ice cream. Well, if I don't have $5, I can't buy ice cream. But even if I have $5 and the store is not open, I can't buy ice cream. So both must be true in the and situation here. On the other hand, the OR operator, the OR statement, only requires one of them to be true. It could be both, but it, it at least has to be one. So if x equals 15, then this whole statement will be true. If name equals Kim, then this whole statement will be true. If x is 15 and name equals Kim, this whole statement will still be true. The only case in which this statement will be false is if x is not 15 and name is not Kim. If both of these are false in the current conditions, then the body of this if statement will not get executed. And maybe you can imagine that you can use these ands and ors to make as complicated of statements, conditional statements, as you'd like to. You could put a hundred conditional statements together with and and or between pairs of them and lots of different combinations that you can make. 
And so when you want to represent really complex states of things, you really want to make sure that all of the conditions are lined up perfectly for a line of code to execute. You can do that with an if statement, with a conditional, by finding the right pieces and then combining them in the right logical ways using and if you want to make sure that every uh, one of those conditions must be true, or using or if you really only care that one of them is true. Another kind of conditional that you'll often see is the in statement. So we used in when we were writing loops, but here we're going to use it to check whether something belongs to a list. So if a person tries to log into our system, for example, we might have a set of user IDs that are allowed to log in. So they provide their user ID and we check if that user ID is in our list of approved IDs. If they gave us th 354, then this user ID in approved IDs would evaluate to true and we would print out your user ID has been accepted. If they gave us 142, that is not in our list of approved IDs. And so Python, the if statement would recognize that here. It would say, is 142 in approved IDs? No, it is not false. No, it is not, period. The statement is false. And so it would not print your user ID has been accepted and hopefully it would not give the person access to whatever system we were trying to set up there. And we'll get more into list containment and stuff like that at later points too, but this is a pretty straightforward one that we can just check if something is in that list and get a true or false back from that. We can also say if the user ID is not in our approved IDs. And so for instance, here we might print something like congratulations, or I'm sorry, uh, unfortunately you're not allowed access here or that sort of thing. Unapproved access attempt, I don't know, something scary that makes them try not to log into the system if they're not supposed to. I mentioned before this idea of Boolean values. Anything that can evaluate to true or false, any of our conditions, is a Boolean statement. Um, you've often heard these referred to probably in the past as simply logical statements, something that can be determined to be true or false, and there's not an in-between state for them. X is less than seven, or X is not less than seven, but it can't be both. So many programming languages, Python included, have a variable type, a data type, that can represent true or false. And that's called a Boolean type. So we can actually create variables that store true or false. In Python, these are keywords and they're capitalized, capital T, R-U-E, or capital F-A-L-S-E. They don't go in quotes. That's a string. And we certainly can put the words true and false into strings, and they won't affect the, the conditionals of our programs at all. But if, for instance, I wanted a variable that I could use in an if statement and just say, if that thing, so let's say valid login. I create a variable named valid login and I say that equals true. Then I could simply say if valid login, then print out congratulations, you have access to the system or that kind of thing. So you will probably get a good number of chances throughout the, the course to play with these kinds of Boolean values, but it is important to recognize that whether you create variables for them or not, they are all throughout your code. If you're using if statements, um, and in some cases when you're using loops, there will be conditional statements, there will be Boolean statements in your code. 
So anything that can evaluate to true or false is using Boolean values there. And you'll hear this term referred to a lot if you keep going in programming. One last structure that I wanted to show you is something that you'll see often in code. And it's actually equivalent to the structure that we showed originally for if else and l if statements. We can write a statement like we had originally. If some condition, then do a thing. L if some other condition, do a different thing. Else, do some entirely different thing than the other two. So that is one structure. And I would argue this is typically the clearest. If you can structure your code in this way, it's all at similar levels and it helps to show that only one of these is going to happen. However, many programmers will write their code in nested if else statements. So here we have, if our first condition is true, then do something for that condition. Then we simply have an else. That means condition one was not true. And inside of that else, we can have another if else. So we say if condition two, just like the one we had over here, then do something for condition two, else do something for condition three. You will get the same result from both of these statements if they're written in this exact way. I would argue it's easier to lose track of what was true or false in this nested circumstance here, but there are plenty of cases where nesting like this is very helpful. You even could put a nested if else statement inside of the body of your if, if you wanted to. If there were further conditions that you wanted to check, then you could put a nested thing inside of there as well. Um, and it's really up to you ultimately, the style of this that you prefer, whether you like to see the sort of pairs of if else and you narrow it down to just those and you end up nesting them or whether you like to see these chains of if, elif, possibly more elifs and eventually an else. I would argue that it's easier to follow your code and to read your code if you can structure it in this if elif kind of structure but I, I would still concede that there are times when it makes much more sense to use a nested thing, especially if you're going to need further conditions inside of the body of the if and possibly further conditions inside of the body of the else and so on. You can nest them as deep as you need to, but once you get to more than two or three levels of these, you might want to consider if there's another way that you could restructure your code write a separate function to handle some portion of that, or in some other way, combine them into elif statements or something like that. So an if statement allows our code to check a condition and execute its body, execute the body of the if statement only if that condition is true. This allows our programs to be responsive to lots of different possibilities and lots of different states. And this is the basis for all of the sort of differentiation in behavior that you may have seen in programs throughout your use of computers. If you click OK, this thing ha happens versus if you clicked something else, a different thing happens. Lots of different conditional statements like if for building in those sorts of behaviors. And you can build on that if statement using a chain with elifs, also called else if, or and then eventually possibly an else statement. You can also nest if statements inside of each other to test one condition, then another, then another inside of the existing if statement too.